I was diagnosed with Lyme disease about 10 years ago in Spokane, Washington, mm -hmm. and it was a diagnosis that some people thought was real and some people didn't think mm -hmm. was real, and so I was untreated and left untreated for years. Mm -hmm. And so it was really, really difficult, mm -hmm. and this is at Providence Health and Services, so uh, the biggest hospital mm -hmm. around wouldn't treat me, and so that's why I became an activist and I'm here today. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as the money stuff goes, I don't know a lot about what they're going to spend the money on, but that's what the people we're here with want us to do, is ask for money. So, so do you know if you contracted it in Washington? I believe I contracted it in Idaho, but... Really? But right next to Spokane. Uh-huh. Interesting. Um, and so have you, like, I mean, it was 10 years ago. Do you think the situation has improved in terms of treatment and... It, there has been some games made but we're still here mm -hmm. fighting this so mm -hmm. it's really tough we need more recognition we need people on the west coast to realize that it is a problem there it's not just the east coast thing mm -hmm. that's why Deb and i came here she's from oregon, I'm from oregon. Mm -hmm. okay and so we're kind of together with the pacific northwest contingency mm -hmm. in a way because there's all these studies and surveys and things done about you know the east coast you know what's mm -hmm. going on with lyme but on the West Coast, we're not getting any research. We're not hmm. getting dollars out there. Hmm. We're not doing tick surveys. So we have complete denial of care out there. I did not and, know that. Yes. Yeah, I've got to for actually instance, have you'll a get a test that'll say uh, positive for Lyme, and then you take the second test and it'll say negative. And one of the issues is, is that we have numerous different Borrelia strains, and Borrelia is what causes Lyme disease, mm -hmm. Borrelia burgdorferi. But on the West Coast, we have other Borrelia strains, relapsing fever Borrelia strains that the testing doesn't show up positive for, but yet it still gives you the same disease, huh. the same rash, the same headaches, the same everything, but it just uh, doesn't show up on the testing. Huh. So uh, we're fighting for better tests, and we want people to know that it is on the West Coast, that you can get it from numerous vectors. Mm -hmm. So tests that focus on different strains yes. that are found outside of the East Coast. Right, yeah. Right. But okay. that like, do cause disease. For example, we have a West Coast version of babesiosis, mm. which is a called a co-infection. It's like an additional infection that goes with Lyme. Mm. And so we actually have um, a Ducani is the species of Borrelia, or, um, a Babesia, mm. which I have, mm. and I got it from Oregon. Mm. But because Oregon's using East Coast testing techniques. Mm -hmm. They're looking for East Coast strains. Mm -hmm. So I could never prove a positive result so that I qualify for insurance coverage. Mm -hmm. I see. And in fact, I have a phone call that I made to the Peace Health Infectious Disease Unit there in Eugene where they say, we elect to not treat Lyme disease here. That's just our choice. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> I can't believe oh, just that. a second. <laughs> So, I mean, you guys are the Peace Health Office, um, medical office for um, infectious diseases, right? Correct. And, and so, I guess I don't understand. I have infections, and, and you're telling me that on Lyme disease, there's no... Uh, there's Our doctors don't treat for Lyme disease here. Wow. That's just their choice. They don't have, they don't have any current treatment for it, so they don't treat for it. When did that happen? This is in 14, 2014. Okay. Um, you can go to um, our uh, YouTube channel. I'm, I'm with the Flippin' Lyme Foundation. We're out of Eugene. You, this is on our YouTube yeah. channel. You guys are welcome to use this at will. But this is a real case scenario of what patients are facing in Oregon and Washington mm -hmm. daily. Yeah, and pretty much the same story for me. I went in over and over again, spent over 20000 out of pocket oh prior, my God. prior to yes. Obamacare just for testing yeah and I yeah. uh, was given a bunch of uh, prescriptions uh -huh. and none of it helped and it, it was nothing to do with infectious disease it was all to do with uh, psychiatric is what the pills that they were giving me wow. for and yeah it was really really bad so how like now <laughs> have you finally <laughs> found something that works I'm using cannabis and that's what I ha I haven't seen a doctor in almost five years now. Wow. I've got PTSD from the experience. Yeah. If you can look yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid to go to the doctors yeah. now because I just don't know. I don't want to be dismissed. I don't want to be given yeah. any more mm -hmm. drugs that are weird like that. So, Well, they go and they throw drugs at us to placate the symptomology, right. but they won't give us medication 
that can kill the pathogen mm -hmm. that's causing the, mm -hmm. the symptomology. Mm -hmm. So that's our quandary. And so then this is Ross and I's fifth national Lyme disease event. You know, 25, 2,900 miles to get here. So wow. This is a yeah. big yeah, absolutely. A deal for us because we're both dealing with thousands of patients at home mm -hmm. that we're hearing from <clears throat> that aren't getting care. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we went, you know, ahead and we worked, we've been at protests, we got the new Tick-Borne Working Group, mm. and here's their annual report, which basically says that the United States has done a poor job at diagnosing and treating Lyme disease. Right. <clears throat> it's shocking the results that we finally got. <clears throat> how long has this working group been, um, like how long ago was it established? Uh, it's about a year ago or so. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah, okay. I, really knew. I think about okay. two years the working group was yeah. established, uh, and then um, they wrapped that up, I think, pretty much, or they're yeah. doing different parts of it now. But Right. And so and these it, have folks from like CDC, NIH, yes. right. HHS, like FDA, I mean, do you Everybody's feel like... on board with this okay. for the most part. Now we, we know that like Susan Collins has been leading and championing this for mm -hmm. us, which mm -hmm. has been fabulous. Mm -hmm. And so, and then we have Kay Hagen Tick Act because she got mm -hmm. um, sick. <clears throat> Palisons. Thank yeah. you, I can't say that uh, virus, but that was a tick-borne illness. So they named the, the Tick Act mm -hmm. in her behalf. Mm -hmm. And so we have that and the president signed it. And they did this in actual record time in a matter of weeks and not like years. Mm -hmm. So we have that set up. Now we need to allocate money to it. It's We're looking at 30 million right now, mm -hmm. but we really, you know, we want to bump that up to, I think 92 million is the ask mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day. Okay. But we need, you know, NIH to be involved. Um, I mean, we've got to get everybody on board right. because the the only way we're going to overturn these bad state policies is on a federal level. Mm -hmm. And have you thought about sort of the breakdown? If it were ninety two million, how much would be appropriate for like CDC or NIH? I think the, I think Bonnie and Jeff could answer that for you. Okay, clearer than we can because we're we're here to tell you our story right. as a patient, and Jeff would love to hear from you. Yeah, um, there are a number of questions that. You know, we need to feed back to him mm -hmm. about your position, your appropriations process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would definitely <coughs> be interested in hearing um, okay. more from him about that. So I think you probably know um, from our side of things, Senator Leahy is a huge supporter of research money and CDC money for mm -hmm. Lyme disease. Um, that's why we had the increase last year. Excellent. So I think... You guys have been around, you've done this, this is your fifth year now, you know how it works. Yeah. Um, going to as many of our members as possible and delivering the same message that you're delivering. Right. Um, because this is a very, like appropriations is a very member driven process, right? Okay. So we're ultimately responsible to our subcommittee and okay. also the full committee. Right. Um, so as much as you can deliver the exact, and I, you know, I would stress well, the, the exact same message and the exact same mm -hmm. right numbers. <laughs> well, and the Center for Lyme Action is the first kind of like pack that we've had that would represent, you know, Lyme patients. And um, so they're helping to coordinate that and they've done a great job. So this is just kind of outlines exactly what we're asking for today mm -hmm. from them as far as the changes, you know, that we need to fund the, the Kay Hagen Tick Act with 30 million for these, you know, uh, exercises and then we need to bump up the tick-borne one to 62 million. Mm -hmm. We need the uh, 5 million for tick-borne disease research and we do need um, you know to have you folks see if you'll sign on to the uh, the Lyme disease caucus please. Oh I see. Okay and um, and then we need to find out like what is your appropriations process and if you have a form for that that we could that yeah, I wouldn't say a form. Okay. I would say um, basically exactly this kind of document. <clears throat> and then the question is, and I'm sure, is it Jeff? Jeff, yes. Right, I'm sure yes. Jeff knows as well, um, whether or not you would seek any specific language associated with that funding. So I don't know if you've had a chance yet to digest the president's budget, but they did actually yeah. set aside a decent amount um, of money for Lyme and tick-borne disease. Now the way that they wrote it, and I can only speak to my accounts, which are CDC and NIH, but the way that they wrote it, um, if you read it carefully, they're increasing funding for vector-borne diseases. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and there is a mention of Lyme disease and a specific right. set aside, but the increase is really for vector-borne. So I think the question is, does 
is that does, is that what you're looking for exactly, or that's would you a want starting it to be place. differently? <laughs> that's a starting place okay. for us. That's not where we want to end up. Okay. I mean, you know, right today we're looking at Lyme being new new cases of Lyme disease being six to ten times AIDS. Mm. So if you put mm. us in that context, how much money would you appropriate to AIDS? Right. And then Especially you with multiply their new HIV epidemic. Put, right. Well, we have a silent, quiet slow burning pandemic going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, the reason I'm in my FFA jacket is because when this little kid of 14 mm -hmm. bought this jacket mm -hmm. and got involved in agriculture, she got exposed to pathogens, mm -hmm. which is why I got sick. Mm -hmm. And we're sending kids into these high school programs. Mm -hmm. So here I am, you know, 69 doctors later, Wow. 32 years of methadone wow. for chronic pain. Yeah. I mean, and, and we look at the opiate crisis, and we're all banging our heads against the wall while we look at that. And, you know, if we were treating the pathogens mm -hmm. that are chewing us up alive, we wouldn't need the mm -hmm. opiates for pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it, it is all tied together. Right. Depression, you know, a lot of the rage that goes on and that. But, you know, we're trying to keep a little narrow focus today in, in the Center for Lyme and this agenda as far as asking for this round of ask. You know, we we really worked hard to get to this point. A mm -hmm. lot of blood and sweat and tears, mm -hmm. really. And we're finally here, but we've got to fund this. And, yeah. and we really just have barely have the training wheels on right now. Yeah. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Right, definitely. So Ross and I are here to, you know, to bring our personal experience to the table and say, you know, these are the real faces out there that you folks represent, and we really need your help. And I'm actually run a Facebook page with 15,000 people on it, mm. and I've uh, got over 500 letters from individuals and families, emails, mm. uh, all with grievances with the CDC's diagnostic mm. criteria. Okay. So there's a lot of people that are that are unable to come because they're too sick, and there's been numerous people that have sent me emails that have committed suicide in the last five years. Mm -hmm. Uh, they just right. couldn't hold on. They were hoping that we they'd be able to get enough money for treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, yeah. The only way to get treatment right now for a Lyme patient uh, in most places is with cash and seeing a, mm -hmm. a specialist, a Lyme mm -hmm. literate doctor. Mm -hmm. So if you go into your local hospital like I did, mm -hmm. you're going to get pushed out the door. Mm -hmm. And so then you better have a lot of money if you're going to find that specialist that will actually treat Lyme disease. Because right. our infectious disease clinics won't do it. Right. Deb showed you that. They just say, hey, Lyme well, isn't here, we're not even going to test you for it, and thanks well, for coming. And that's one of our big problems, is that we don't have Lyme here. We hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. Lyme is not, Oregon's not a Lyme endemic state. Washington's not Lyme endemic. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because we're not doing a tick survey of our forest lands so that we can find out what pathogens live in there. Mm -hmm. I contacted the mayor of Eugene last May, and May's Lyme Disease Awareness Month in mm -hmm. Oregon now, and the state hasn't done anything beyond a signature. And I called her and I said, I, you know, the foundation wants to work with you for an awareness program mm -hmm. for Eugene. And uh, she laughed and she says, Deb, the state of Oregon hasn't done a tick survey in 40 years. Oh, wow. You guys have nothing to talk about. That's and she would not even book a meeting. But that's the culture that we're dealing with. So do I you mean, know, who's, who, <clears throat> does CDC do the tick surveys? The thing is, is that's a good question. It's mostly I local. It's allocated to like state agencies and, yes. and okay. private yeah. research part. You know, grants are right. given. For Nonprofits that type of like stuff. us are doing. Uh -huh. Okay. But until we do a survey of our forest and we know what our pathogens and not just ticks, it's fleas and mosquitoes mm -hmm. and bed bugs and lice and spiders. Right. Right. There, you know, there's what 328 species of Lyme Borrelia. Um, 200. And 25 in the United States. Wow. And then you got another 50 co infections. So mm -hmm. these are very complex illnesses mm -hmm. and they're yeah, difficult Lyme disease, to treat. Lyme diseases could be, uh, it's closer to AIDS yes. or cancer than mm -hmm. it is to just a, a nuisance bug bite. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the people that are getting this are ending up with really bad mental problems, mm -hmm. physical problems, skin, I mean, you name it, heart problems. Mm -hmm. So it's really a... Well, when you look at me, I'm probably a million dollar woman. <laughs> two spinal surgeries from two spinal surgeries from degenerative disc disease. Oh. I've had my gallbladder out. I've had my appendix out. Wow. You know, the pain, all the doctors for years. And we could have mitigated that by treating me mm -hmm. on the front end. Mm -hmm. 
So if we had better testing, right. which this is going to include, right. does the work on better testing, uh -huh. so we have a better diagnostic tool, right. and then we're going to need some money behind this so that we can get some campaigns nationally, mm -hmm. that we can get the CDC on board. You know, we have, we have, did you know that you can be born with Lyme disease? I did not know that. Yes. I think I'm a third generation of my family, in huh. fact. Yeah, last and week so, the CDC yeah. actually updated their Lyme disease transmission page uh -huh, right. to include uh, congenital transmission. Okay. Right. So, I mean, we are making baby steps here, but, I mean, if you just think of the ramifications of congenital oh, Lyme yeah. disease, it's, it's just been admitted now, mm -hmm. but for 40 plus years it's been happening. Wow. So, wow. think of all the people. I did not know that. Well, I'm 58. So... If I and I chose to not have kids because I thought there was something wrong with me, mm -hmm. and I found out later I was right. Mm -hmm. But now we've got you know fifth and sixth generations right. after that, right. and we've got kids that are born autistic. You know, a lot of them are responding to vaccines mm -hmm. because they have a damaged immune system because they're born sick mm -hmm. and they may not know it. Mm -hmm. And so we're totally missing the boat here. And he talks about suicide. I was suicide in my history. Mm -hmm. I was so painful. I went home and took 90 oxycodone, mm -hmm. and. You know, because I was done, mm -hmm. and I I made one phone call, and I passed out on that call, and that person rescued me. Oh, thank goodness. But I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Fifty percent <coughs> of our patients suicide out because they can't get help, mm. and they're suffering. And we can do better. Mm -hmm. This is a rich nation, and this is all about policy at the end of the day, right? Can you talk to me a little bit more about the diagnostic criteria and yeah. what the grievances are with that? Yeah, well, what we have is... Um, uh, testing that's based on the human reaction to the bite. So they're not actually testing for the disease itself or the, the pathogen itself. Uh -huh. They're just testing for how your immune system may have reacted to it. Okay. So there's no way right now to know if someone has a current infection, a past infection, or an ongoing infection. Huh. And the doctors have no tools to, to determine that. So, uh -huh. I mean... Uh, it's really tough to tell. They can say, all right, from this test, we think that you've been exposed to Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you've had a tick bite in the last week or so, they can say, yeah, you have it right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But right. You, you might test the same 20 years later if mm -hmm. you've had a tick bite that long ago. And mm -hmm. According to the CDC, early treatment is the key to preventing the l chronic or mm -hmm. symptoms later. But to catch it early is really difficult, especially in the West Coast where right. they won't do the testing. So. In my case, I asked for testing for over two years. Mm -hmm. Every time I'd get rash, I'd be like, would you do a Lyme disease test on me? And they'd say no. Hmm. Finally, when I demanded it and it came back positive mm -hmm. at my, the minor emergency, mm -hmm. the doctor was shocked, horrified, mortified that he didn't order it earlier and sent me to the infectious disease clinic where they immediately booted me out and wouldn't see me. So it's like, all right, the one doctor's telling you you need help mm -hmm. and you go to the place where you're supposed to get it mm -hmm. and they won't help you mm -hmm. because they're their dogma look at look at this right here so this is me this is my medical file so this this one goes back to the early 80s oh, wow. okay these are a halter monitor that I wear, wore for 48 hours uh -huh. look at my heart okay yeah do you see what it's doing here I mean you can just see my heart just going crazy yeah so this is kind of like a flight data recorder so uh -huh. when I feel something you know they call it tachycardia in my heart I would push the button and it recorded mm -hmm. Well, my heart's just going crazy. Hmm. So this is in 2015.